why in the morning quins wednesday is the theme of the day a special thanks to alex and joy for always starting our wednesdays on a laughing note so if you happen to interact with a with a video that you think might go viral send it our way on white 54 channel on twitter white 54 underscore channel on instagram and white 54 on facebook slide in the dm hashtag is why in the morning today hashtag is quins wednesday and this particular time uh, we say strength of a woman so uh yes in studio with me is a very powerful woman most of the time when we get uh, news uh, of diagnosis, uh, about diagnosis with cancer, we, we get scared and uh, this causes a lot of turmoil in families. But this woman in studio with me, she goes by the name Veronica. She helps people to go through this journey and she's here to explain uh, the whole story for us, Karibu Sana. Thank you. All right, your, your camera is number four. Uh, if I missed anything, in your credentials, I like to give people a chance to list it all. Okay. All right, so your camera Thank is you. number four. Let's go. Okay, my name is Veronica Mwangi. Mm -hmm. I'm married and I have two daughters. Mm -hmm. I grew up in a small village in Yeri mm -hmm. where healthcare was not that good. Mm -hmm. And from those days of growing up, I knew I had to do something about women empowerment, especially on the area of of reproductive health issues mm -hmm. yes all right so uh, uh where you grew up women were very marginalized and they were going through a lot yes they mm -hmm. were when issues of bleeding came up mm -hmm. women never talked about it mm -hmm. and even as a small girl mm -hmm. i used to hear so and so died of bleeding uh -huh. during, and childbirth. Uh, during childbirth uh -huh. and even just normal bleeding uh -huh. in between periods uh -huh. so i knew there was a deeper problem that uh -huh. women were not tackling Okay. And it nagged me a lot uh -huh. until later in life when I decided to find out more about that issue. Yes, and fast forward you know, into humanitarian work. And you're doing amazing stuff for the women, uh, supporting the women and supporting families. But I'd like to take you back. You went to primary school in Nyeri. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the name of the village? So we can... Okay, yeah. I, I come from Sagana Scheme. Uh -huh. It's a small village in Madeira West. Uh -huh. Yes, deep down in Nyeri County. Oh, it's a Ghana scheme. Is it around the river? Uh, it's uh, at the slopes of Mount Kenya. Uh -huh. Yes, and there is one big river called Sagana. Uh -huh. Yes, that's where I grew up. Uh -huh. Yes, and even as I grew up, we had a problem with water. Mm -hmm. The river is not too near. Uh -huh. So it was quite a taxing job for women mm -hmm. to fetch water, to mm -hmm. go to hospitals. Uh -huh. So I knew the areas that needed tackling was water uh -huh. and medical. Having experienced all these things. Mm -hmm. So you went to primary school there. Uh, high school look kind of uh, For me, it uh -huh. was such an eye opener uh -huh. to come from such a village uh -huh. and to Nairobi for uh -huh. high school. Uh -huh. I came to Meriliki Girls, uh -huh. which is at the border of, of Nairobi and uh -huh. Kiabu. Uh -huh. And that's the time I, I knew God is really doing a great and mighty thing in me uh -huh. because I used to pray that. I get out of the village uh -huh. and I come to town. And get I'd exposed to all these things. It, yes, that uh -huh. exposure was important for me. Uh -huh. And from my home village, uh -huh. not many people had come to Nairobi. Uh -huh. My dad used to work in Nairobi, uh -huh. Nairobi City Council. Uh -huh. But even friends from his friends, there were none in Nairobi. All right. And even me, I just visited Nairobi a few times before I came to high school. All right, so coming yes. to high school, Mary Leaky Girls, I'm guessing you are one of the uh, big best performers in your primary school. Yes, uh -huh. I, I was. I think I was second performing uh -huh. in primary school. Uh -huh. And I think I'm the only girl that joined a boarding school. In your year? In, in my year. Daddy and even proud. before then, uh -huh. there weren't many who had gone to boarding. All right. Yes. Uh, did it come naturally for you, uh, this, uh, the, the books thing, or you had, you had a passion for it? Uh, I really had to work because I used to fear darkness. Uh -huh. And darkness in Ushago, uh -huh. I knew the way to get out of it uh -huh. was to work hard so with the books. So your motivation was going uh, to high school in Nairobi? In Nairobi, yes. All right, it how was. was your experience in high school, coming from a village oh. and meeting people from uh, div all these diversities, rich kids from Nairobi, uh, rich kids from across the country, some of them coming from humble backgrounds like yourself? Uh, it wasn't easy, but uh, I fitted in. Uh -huh. Although, you know, back in Oshago, people used to be taught in their local languages. <laughs> no, right. Yes. All right, so you carry so, the, uh, yes, the effects I had, of it. Mm. Yes, I felt the effects of uh -huh. it, but I formed some strong boards uh -huh. with some girls. Uh -huh. 
and uh, I didn't feel intimidated. Uh -huh. I knew I had to do well uh -huh. because I didn't want to go back up country. All right, so you carried your motivation with you. Yes, I did. And this is what carried you through high school. Uh, through high school. So support structures like building groups or groups of friends who are yeah. like-minded really help. It really help. Because today we had a, a case of a lady uh, shoplifting mm -hmm. weaves because of pressure. She mm -hmm. wants to look uh, like uh, the other girls were slaying in a school at the age of 19. And I feel like these girls need the guidance. Okay. Uh, so maybe you can tell them how, how, how you can get to beat these things. Because I'm guessing you, you moved uh, to, to campus. I moved to Meteorological College uh -huh. where I did a higher diploma, uh -huh. yes, before getting employment. Before getting employment? Yes. And you had to go through all these pressures? Yes, I, I, I did, but uh -huh. up to now it's a very good school. Uh -huh. I visited it some two weeks ago, uh -huh. and the strong Christ, uh, Christian base uh -huh. that I got from there, uh -huh. it's still there. Uh -huh. I admire the teachers. Uh -huh. The students, uh -huh. there is so much of Christianity there. Right. So if a girl gets lost while in that school, uh -huh. it's only those who want to get lost. If otherwise, you want to get lost. yes. So otherwise, the pillars, they, the pillars are support structures like uh, faith. Faith is very important. Yes. Uh, a group of like-minded people is very important. It is. And the vision, your yeah. motivation. Never Motiva forget your motivation. Yes, and never forget where you come from, uh -huh. because I knew. If I go back to up country, I uh -huh. wouldn't be able to uplift other girls. All right. So I had to keep that in mind. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. So you went to meteorological college. You studied meteoro mete meteorology. <laughs> meteorology. Uh -huh. And then you worked for the meteorological department. For 12 years. For 12 years. Yes. Uh, in Gong Road, that is? Yes, I worked at Gong Road. Uh -huh. I worked at Wilson Airport uh -huh. and Jomo Kenyatta Airport. All right. Yes. People always complain that uh, the predictions are not accurate. Sometimes to Mengo Jambuwa Sana. What is happening? Uh, that, for that one, uh -huh. uh, okay. <laughs> not that they are not accurate, uh -huh. but the stations are far, in, uh, far apart. Uh -huh. So maybe that's where the problem so comes. So some discrepancies might be here, there, here and there. Yes, uh -huh. yes. But you do your work diligently. Yes, we used to, and I know even up to now, uh -huh. they do their work well. All right. Yes. So uh, after working for 12 years, mm -hmm. you decided to get into humanitarian work. And this was your vision from way back. Yes. Helping okay. women uh, in matters of reproductive health. Mm -hmm. And uh, you picked up cancer along the way. You mm -hmm. want, now you're helping women who are suffering uh, from cancer or are affected by cancer uh, t through their journeys of uh, getting fully cured or just living with it. Uh, what inspired you to get into this side of health? Because your vision was always reproductive health, uh, seeing people die f dying from bleeding and during childbirth. But you went into cancer. What inspired you to get into cancer? Okay, uh, when I left uh, meteorological, mm -hmm. my husband had seen the tender care. I got married quite early mm -hmm. in life, uh -huh. and my husband knew that I was tender with patients. Uh -huh. Our letter tests who are sick, they uh -huh. would come to our house, mm -hmm. and I would really take care of them. Mm -hmm. So he knew that I would really touch lives in the medical field. Uh -huh. So after 2009, uh, we invested in a medical laboratory uh -huh. where we had screening equipment. Uh -huh. And from there, mm -hmm. I came to realize that even women in Nairobi were shying away from being screened. Uh -huh. So I started visiting Kenyatta Hospital mm -hmm. so that I know what happens if the disease progresses, if the breeding progresses. Mm -hmm. I met many, many women mm -hmm. who are even sleeping on the benches mm -hmm. with no home to go to. At Kenyatta uh, National uh, Hospital. At Kenyatta. Uh -huh. I would talk to them and they, they would all say, my, when I was diagnosed, I, I really had bread for six months. Mm -hmm. I had bread for some time mm -hmm. before they could open up. Uh -huh. So I got a small group of them, mm -hmm. about five. Mm -hmm. I encouraged them to speak up uh -huh. about reproductive health. Mm -hmm. I told them when they left the hospital, we would mm -hmm. go back with them to their villages mm -hmm. so that I can help them create cancer awareness. Right. And that's what I did. We started uh, going to the grassroots. Mm -hmm. We went to Karutuli. Uh -huh. We've been to Mwingi, to Kitui. Mm -hmm and to Nyeri, mm -hmm. and like uh -huh. So after talking to many more, uh -huh. women started coming up uh -huh. and saying, yes, I've had this problem for some time. Uh -huh. I haven't told anyone, uh -huh. what can I do? Uh 
Mm -hmm. So I, I started uplifting them now to the hospital. And when you talk uh, bleeding, mm -hmm. what is the cause of this bleeding you're talking about? I bled for six months, I bled for five months before I got diagnosed. That, that is one of the signs of cervical cancer. All right. Yes. So service, cervical cancer is your specialty? Uh, along the way, uh -huh. I've taken other cancers uh -huh. because I realize they are equally as painful as cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Even those not breathing, maybe a breast has been cut off, uh -huh. they are in little pain. They say, even it's better if I got cervical because people wouldn't see. That uh -huh. stigma associated uh -huh. with cancer is really affecting. All right, mm -hmm. we'll get into the nitty gritties uh, from screening to the steps you take uh, mm -hmm. to taking them through this journey. But before that, let's watch a video of one of Veronica's projects, then we'll be back with some more of this. <laughs> We do train them on making baskets, mm -hmm. making carpets, mm -hmm. sweaters. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Yes. To make some money to help them through the journey. Yes, as we make some money, the, the most important part of it is to divert the mind from the pain of the disease. Once a woman is working on, on an item like that, mm -hmm. her mind won't be on the disease. All right. She'll, she'll be concentrating on what she's making. And if she knows it's an order from someone, mm -hmm. she'll really work hard. To, to get the order ready in time. Right. Yes. So uh, this is a distraction. As much as these activities, you engage them and make them some money mm -hmm. to put to take them through uh, this uh, this journey. It's a distraction, and the distraction is very important. Yes. The mm -hmm. uh, the first, uh, it's first a distraction, mm -hmm. and we know once you are distracted from the disease, you become productive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Uh, yes. But uh, the little money they make from it. We proud it back to the project mm -hmm. to support those who are undergoing medical care mm -hmm. because uh, we pay for them in HIF, mm -hmm. which is supporting a lot, mm -hmm. but it's not enough mm -hmm. because doctor's fee is not covered by the NHIF, mm -hmm. lab tests are not covered by NHIF. What is covered by NHIF? In NHIF, it covers their chemos mm -hmm. and their radiotherapy, mm -hmm. yes, and some of the me medicines. All right, so as somebody who has seen how NHIF is touching lives. Would you like to see some improvement in it? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, okay, it's doing a good job, uh -huh. but I feel it's not starting from the basic. Uh -huh. uh, we might pay for that NHIF, uh -huh. but when a woman goes to Kenyatta, uh -huh. she's told to pay for the consultation uh -huh. before that chemo. Uh -huh. If she doesn't have the money for that, that consultation, uh -huh. it means she won't assess the chemo. All right. Yes. So we should scrap this cash exchanging uh, yes. part. Especially for the needy, uh -huh. it's a really, really a painful process. Uh -huh. We'd want more done on the basics covered by an NHIF. We'll be touching on that a uh, little bit more. Uh, so what are the steps? The steps are, uh, first you're creating awareness. Yes, about that's the this, first, yes. About this thing. Uh -huh. You've traveled across counties. Yes. You're yet to finish the 47 counties, creating awareness uh -huh. about the symptoms and diagnosis. Yes. All right. So uh, women are going to uh, for screening, yeah? Mm -hmm. they but, are. Uh, but some of them are shying from going for screening. Mm -hmm. What are some of the reasons you've figured uh, uh, making women be scared of going, to, going for screening? Uh, to most of them, they are upbringing, uh -huh. the intrusive nature of a pap smear. Uh -huh. Some of them feel that it's too intrusive. Uh -huh. Yes, that's why they keep away. All right. But when I use the women that we have in Lady Hope, uh -huh. They are able to they are able to see the wider picture uh -huh. that if they are screened, uh -huh. they will go for treatment early, uh -huh. and uh, cervical cancer is curable. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. So this issue of uh, the intrusive nature of the screening, uh -huh. uh, the mindset is very is very hard to change. It's very hard to change somebody's mind because uh, this is something that is cultured from a very early age. Uh -huh. What do you think is the is the approach? What are some of the steps that can be taken to encourage women to go for screening? Uh, it, star it starts with the parents. Mm -hmm. We have to talk to our girls, mm -hmm. show them the importance, and as they grow up, 
they'll be knowing that it's a necessity. Mm -hmm. Just like the way we teach our kids to brush their teeth, mm -hmm. they know it has to be a daily thing. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, let's teach our girls mm -hmm. that screening is important, mm -hmm. and when they grow up, they'll be knowing it's a routine thing. All right. Yes. Uh, uh, do you see a trend, a trend where they are more open to uh, women gynecologists than men gynecologists? Yes, uh -huh. that one is there because even when I was working at the laboratory, mm -hmm. when we talked of screening, they, were, they would ask, who, who would do the screening, a lady or a man? Uh -huh. Yes. So this issue needs to be addressed? Uh, somehow. Somehow. Yes. More women should get into this field of gynecology to help other women. I think so. You think so? This yeah. is also something that could help. White54 channel on Twitter, White54 underscore channel on Instagram, and White54 on Facebook is the way to interact with us. We have uh, Veronica, who is a champion for better healthcare and cancer in particular. So uh, as we move on swiftly, uh, there's the awareness step, there's the, the test uh, mm -hmm. step. Uh, mm -hmm. Once the somebody's diagnosed mm -hmm. you have them in you you have some of them in your group here yes all right uh, what are some of the, the the things you take them through okay first of all mm -hmm. i encourage them to join our support group mm -hmm. because they have to change the mindset mm -hmm. and look at it as cancer is not a death sentence mm -hmm. they have to to be aware that they can get better mm -hmm. and uh, when the patients in the project talk to others mm -hmm they are able to know that even me, if she went through it, mm -hmm. I'll also go through it. Mm -hmm. Because initially we would hear people, celebrities, maybe coming up and say, yes, I had cancer. Mm -hmm. But to a little woman, a grassroots woman, mm -hmm. they'll think that if that one had money, mm -hmm. that's why he got through the cancer. So it doesn't impact them as much? Uh, yes, but mm -hmm. when they hear from the needy, poor cancer patients, uh -huh. they are able to identify uh -huh. and they know if they made it, uh -huh. it's not the money part of it, mm -hmm. they'll also make it. Right. So after joining the support group meetings, mm -hmm. we take through them through what to expect, mm -hmm. whether it's that radio, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, mm -hmm. and the effects of it, mm -hmm. because once a patient starts going through the treatment, mm -hmm. sometimes they wonder, do others go through this? Uh -huh. Yeah, the effects might kill them. The effects but might kill them, yes. especially psychologically. Uh, yes, psychologically. Uh, the effects like loss of appetite are here. Yes, uh, vomiting, hair loss. Hair loss, uh -huh. yes. So these things affect your body, they affect your mood. Your mind, uh -huh. yes. Right. So hearing from others is uh -huh. quite important. Mm -hmm. So after the support groups, there are so those who don't have relatives in Nairobi. Uh -huh. I have accommodation facility for them. Mm -hmm. I house them. Mm -hmm. as we take them to Kenyatta uh -huh. for the treatment. Mm -hmm. I give them the food, I give them the bus fare. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's how they're able to go through the treatment. All right, before we talk about where all this money uh, comes from, how does it affect their families? Uh, most of them, due to financial constraints, mm -hmm. they feel this is too much. Mm -hmm. So the patients, what they've been telling me, they feel rejected, mm -hmm. but not from that they are rejected. Mm -hmm. It's because the family lacks, uh -huh. so they don't the have the money. training. Yes. Uh -huh. So they find that the cancer burden is too much on the family. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Where does all this money come from? Because uh, you retired yes. after 12 years. Mm -hmm. You're not in employment. You don't have a salary. Where do you get the money to help support all these women? Because this is a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work, uh -huh. but I do help my husband in his businesses. Mm -hmm. He supports me in the project, mm -hmm. and our friends also have been very supportive. Mm -hmm. I, my, my Christian community, uh -huh. St. Catherine of Siena, Kitsuru, uh -huh. they've been very, very supportive. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who've housed us as Lady Hope. Uh -huh. That's where we have our support group meetings. Uh -huh. Our skills empowerment programs are uh -huh. there. And the houses I have for accommodation are very near the church. Uh -huh. So when I am in need, uh -huh. I really approach the, the parishioners uh -huh. who come in for me. Uh -huh. Yes, I have a few other supporters. Uh -huh. yeah, yes. So the church has really, really helped you? Yes, up this. to now. All right. Yes. Uh, you f do you sometimes feel like if I had more money, I could do more for the women in the country? Yes. All right. Th that one. It's no, no doubt. Uh -huh. I know if I have money for uh -huh. it, uh -huh. I can really, really make this project big mm -hmm. because there is need. Mm -hmm. Women are in pain. Mm -hmm. And nowadays I take even men mm -hmm. because behind every man, there is a, na a woman who uh -huh. is crying. Uh -huh. Yes, because for the sake of the mothers to uh -huh. those men, uh -huh. for the sake of the wives, uh -huh. I do take them in. Uh -huh. 
And I know there is need. Mm -hmm. I need to house more people as they undergo the treatment. Mm -hmm. I need to feed them. Mm -hmm. Because once a patient is undergoing chemo or radiotherapy, they need mm -hmm. to eat well. Mm -hmm. Initially, I just used to tell and them... specific foods. Yes. Uh -huh. I just used to tell them, when you go home, eat well. But I realized there, there, there might be no f food mm -hmm. at home. Uh -huh. Yes. So I there, keep them and feed no them well. Uh -huh. Yes. You uh -huh. are telling them to eat well. Uh -huh. They don't have. Uh, or there is no one to cook for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nowadays, when I house them, uh -huh. I have a caretaker for the facility who uh -huh. cooks for them, mm -hmm. who makes sure they are comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes. And right. that's the, how we eat so their pain. So if anybody would like to join the Lady of Hope Foundation and just support in terms of uh, maybe just bringing the pro as some, uh, some people are professionals in the fields of public health, some people are professionals in the fields of psychology, just talking to the people. Some people have some extra money they can contribute to the project. How can they get to interact with you? Camera is number four. Okay. Uh, we need su support mm -hmm. from well-wishers. If you bring your support to St. Catherine of Siena, it's mm -hmm. on Kitsuru Road. You can give it to the parish priest and he'll give it to us. We usually have our support group meetings mm -hmm. every two weeks. Mm -hmm. You can join us. You can use whatever gifts God ha has given you mm -hmm. to impact on the lives of these patients. Uh, your time with the patients is quite important because you have something to offer. If you want to give us financial support, mm -hmm. we bank with the National Bank of Kenya West Rads branch. We also have a pay bill number, 6519696. You can, you can donate through it, mm -hmm. and your support will greatly touch the lives of the patients. All right. Uh, interacting with you directly, maybe a phone number or your uh, personal assistance mm -hmm. phone number. Okay. We are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, we are called Lady Hope Wellness. Mm -hmm. We are also on Instagram and Twitter. And our phone number is 0732 30 18 20. Uh, you can also email us at ladyhopewellness Lady Hope at gmail.com. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much for that. I hope uh, we get uh, more support for the women in this country because uh, they're the center of, oh. the, uh, of the family. They're the center they are the backbone of the, of the society. Uh, the backbone of the society. Yes. I'd like to ask, uh, I've been worked for a while. Sometimes I wake up and feel like, oh, not again. This is stressful. Mm-hmm. You doing all this work, do you sometimes feel like, wow, I can't carry you on like this anymore? Because there are so many people doing humanitarian work mm -hmm. and you sharing your story with them mm -hmm. it has the same effect with a uh, cancer survivor sharing uh, her story or his story with a cancer patient. So do you sometimes feel like, wow, I can't do this anymore? Uh, I haven't felt that because mm -hmm. once I look back at a patient, by the time she came in, maybe she was too low, depressed, mm -hmm. needing counseling, mm -hmm and a, po a point of giving up because mm -hmm. some come at the point of suicide. Mm -hmm. When I look back at them, maybe two months, three mm -hmm. months later, I see the change in them. Mm -hmm. I see a smile on them. Mm -hmm. I'm really motivated to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm a very happy person. I mm -hmm. thank God for it. Mm -hmm. And that's a way of thanking God what he has done mm -hmm. to be at the level I am in. Mm -hmm. I uplift others. Mm -hmm. I make others happy. Mm -hmm. I like seeing them happy. As a way of telling God, thank you for what you've done for me. His faithfulness, his greatness, mm -hmm. yes. So you always find a motivation in something. That is something I've realized with you, and your motivation in this is putting smiles on people's faces. Yes. Uh, the people who are affect, uh, affected directly, mm -hmm. and the people who are affected indirectly, indirectly. who are the families. Uh -huh. Wonderful. We yeah, we uh, are all in affected indirectly. Uh, we, uh, yes. we, are all, uh, we all know somebody yes. who's suffering. And even if we don't know, uh -huh. the economic burden of cancer uh -huh. in our country, it's putting all of us down. Uh -huh. Yes, so we need, as a country, we need to join hands, uh -huh. uh, fight cancer, uh -huh. so that it stops eating into our economy. Come together, fight cancer, so that it stops eating to our economy. All right, mm -hmm. prevention is better than cure. It's a cliche saying, yeah. is this an angle that you're bringing into your foundation? Mm -hmm. Uh, prevention, the issue of prevention before all these diagnoses and tests and everything. Uh, do you try to educate people on how they can prevent or how they can avoid cancer? Yes, uh, primary prevention mm -hmm. is the key, mm -hmm. especially the youth. Mm -hmm. I participate with a lot of youth from mm -hmm. various schools, Braiban, Peponi, mm -hmm. 
we have St. Mary's mm -hmm. and Luakabete campus. Mm -hmm. We've been telling them, let's take early preventive measures. Mm -hmm. Uh, we tell them the signs mm -hmm. to look out for. We tell them they don't have to wait for the signs. Mm -hmm. They go for screening mm -hmm. because we know the key is with youth participation mm -hmm. because the youth are able to pass messages very fast mm -hmm. through, through the social media and other platforms. Mm -hmm. So when they pass the message, we know the message is out there mm -hmm. far and wide. Mm -hmm. And if they are taking the steps, the first step is yourself. Right. Be screened. Yes. Awareness, 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 awareness. When awareness. is your next event as we wrap this up? Okay, our next support group meeting will mm -hmm. be on 10th of mm -hmm. August. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have the patients there. Mm -hmm. So anyone wanting to come and interact with them, mm -hmm. they are very welcome. We have those meetings every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then in October, we'll have a family day with our supporters. Mm -hmm. We haven't set the date yet, but we'll set it soon. That's a day when supporters come to see the people they've been supporting. Mm -hmm. They are able to hear from the patients what mm -hmm. we've done for them mm -hmm. and what needs to be done further than that. Mm -hmm. And then in January of every year, mm -hmm. we have a, a cervical cancer awareness walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will be the last Saturday mm -hmm. of January, the mm -hmm. 25th. We call upon everyone to join us. To join. We have even people coming from Mombasa mm -hmm. for the last five years. We've mm -hmm. had them coming with the buses mm -hmm. for the sequence. We don't mm -hmm. leave them seated. We carry them with the buses mm -hmm. and they take the route with us. All right. Yes. Wonderful. Your last remarks to the people who are watching right now. You've said everybody is affected in one way or the other, mm -hmm. and everybody's a stakeholder in this, and everybody needs to do something. So, your last word to whoever is watching us as we. Okay. What I would say is that the cancer fight begins with you. Take your small steps towards the cancer fight. Be screened. Pull along a thread to be screened. And then remember those needy ones that can't afford the screening and the treatment, you can support us light at Lady Hope. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Your Facebook page one last time because I know all this information about the events are on your Facebook, right? Yes, they are mm -hmm. on Facebook. Uh, uh, on Facebook, we are Lady Hope Wellness at Facebook. We are on Twitter, Lady Hope Wellness, and on Instagram. So you can contact us. We have our website, uh, www www.ladyhopewellness.co.ke Thank you very much, Veronica, for coming through to Y in the morning. Okay. We appreciate you so much. Okay. And all the best in your endeavors and whatever you're doing for the women and for the country at large. Thank you. All right, we've come to the end of Strength of a Woman. And uh, yes, we had uh, uh, Veronica, who is the founder of Lady Hope uh, Wellness. If you know somebody who's doing an amazing thing out there uh, for, for the people, uh, share that with us on White 54 channel on Twitter, White 54 underscore channel on Instagram, and White 54 on Facebook. I go by the name of Barry Moses, or it's Barry Moko Kilam Tandawa Kijami. Kalami Valley is coming up next with, uh, with Girls Talk. You don't want to miss this.